So I've made a start on my scrapbook for Australia. One page, not bad. Good morning everybody, it's Stephen here for Bland Designs and this is Monday, April the 9th, 2018. Um, so, I'm a little earlier this morning and some of the light is streaming in through my window so there might be a bit of a glare on my glasses. There is. Um, so, just ignore it. It's the twinkle in my eye. Um, so, let's get right into things. First thing you saw in my teaser was this page. This is the beginnings of my scrapbook album for my trip to uh, Australia. Um, I've got all my pieces ready to go. I just have to assemble everything and I'm just gonna have to take a day and do that. I have to be honest, uh, I'm not into scrapbooking like I used to be. Um, I've done it since about 2002. Um, but now my, t my attention is attracted to other things as well and I just don't, do the scrapbooking like I used to. So that's going to be a quick and dirty scrapbook and what I mean by that is I've pre-selected all my pieces, um, I printed all my pictures. That glare is annoying. At least it's annoying to me. Okay, well I can't do much about it so sorry. Anyways, uh, as I was saying, I have everything ready to go. I just have to basically glue it all down. But there's other things I want to do too. So anyways, of course one of those things is what you see behind me. Uh, I'm not going to get off my stool here. I'll just bend over this way. You've seen it before. It is now layered. It has the batting in it. It has the backing on it. Now in the next sew sewing class, which will be the last one for this particular quilt, we're going to be taught how to do the quilting part using a walking foot. And then all I have to do after I get that done is bind it and it's all finished. And I've had some trials and tribulations with this quilt. And I mentioned them yesterday on Stephen and Walter Live. And Stephen and Walter Live, if you didn't catch it, the link's below. Where I told you that I cut the border pieces wrong, so I had to piece them together. Um, it's not that visible to see where they're pieced together because I cut them on the bias. That's what you're supposed to do. So I got that. I had to rip one border out because I, hadn't, I forgot to square up the uh, quilt at that point. And that black thing you see over here by my ear is not a bug. That's just my um, thumbtack holding it up. Um, and then I had some problems with the backing. I thought I had enough backing material. Actually, um, the instructor had cut my backing material, material too short. Um, she realized that after the class was over and gave me a call at home and said, you know, just bring in that piece. I'll cut you a larger piece, uh, no problem. But I really like the backing material and you'll see that when the quilt's done. So I said, well, that won't go amiss. I like it, so I'll keep it. I got the right size. Of course, I didn't measure it right when I got the layers together and I was short on the piece that should have fit. It was my fault. I cut it short. So I ended up having to piece uh, two pieces together. Thank goodness I kept that other bit of fabric. And uh, I do have a seam at the back, but that's not unusual with quilts because oftentimes, um, well, in fact, I think all of my quilts are pieced on the back. So it's not a biggie. It just was very frustrating. And for about three hours, uh, Saturday afternoon, Walter could hear me downstairs cursing and swearing. And he knows when I start doing that, he should stay out of my way. Um, and he did. But anyways, I've got it all together. It's ready for quilting, so move on. Seems like the more I learn about quilting, the more mistakes I make. I don't know what that's all about. But anyways, I'm still enjoying it. So, what else have I done? Well, I created this. Now, you've seen this material before. This is fabric that is actually a page out of my art journal book that I scanned in the computer, sent to Spoonflower, and had them make it into material. I decided I need a little pouch with a zipper two and it's lined uh, to put my scissors and my rotary cutters in when I go to my sewing class. So this turned out it was a quick little project and um, I'm quite pleased with the end result. So that was good. And I also made a pressing board. Now if you don't know what a pressing board is basically it's an ironing board but because quilts and quilt pieces tend to be 
quite big, they're a little bit awkward for pressing, and you do a lot of pressing when you're making a quilt. So I'm just going to move this light down a little bit to see if that makes anything better. That helps. Um, so you need a big area. An ironing board just doesn't make it. And quite frankly, I don't want to keep running over to my laundry room, getting my ironing board, set it up, take it down, back and forth. Ideally, if I had a room dedicated to nothing but sewing, I'd have a huge work table. My sewing machine uh, would be inlaid into it. I'd have an area to cut in, an area to press in. But I don't have that. So I made the next best thing. And I made my own, oops, knocking things down on the back, my own pressing board. It's kind of awkward to show it to you in the whole picture. But what this is, I went to Home Depot, I got a, a three quarter inch piece of plywood. <clears throat> and this one measures, I think, 24 by 24. I put a big piece of batting on it, uh, which is the stuff you put in between quilts, but it's nice and soft. And I had some unfinished, ungessoed canvas. And I put that over top and I just used a staple gun, mitered the corners, stapled it all down. And now I have a really decent cutting surf or pressing surface so I was pleased with that and um, one thing though about that canvas when it hits heat there's a smell comes off it it's kind of a it's an organic type of smell it's not a chemical smell I guess it's just what canvas smells like when it gets kind of damp um, especially when you're using steam on it but anyways I've got a pressing board um, so what else? Oh yeah, so I had, um, I taught an art journaling class and more about that later on in the vlog. But while they were working on the challenge for this class, I was working on my own as well. And this is my latest art journaling page. Now, did I have a plan? No, the only thing I planned was the fact that image that's on there, which is a Norman Rockwell. I love Norman Rockwell. Um, that's the only thing I knew I wanted to have on this page everything else I built up as I went along. Um, and I think it turned out pretty good. And not only that, but it was fun to make. Like sometimes you just let yourself go and see what happens. So that's what I did with that particular page. Um, so what's that take us to next? Um, YouTube channel of the week. This is a these are snippets from a television production company that does uh, a show about crafting and quilting and all kinds of other things um, on a public broadcast station in the States. So those of you that live in the States may have already seen this particular, these particular shows. But they do have this YouTube channel that gives you snippets and I find it really interesting and inspiring. So here's my review. This week's YouTube channel is one that is referred to as KS Productions TV. This is actually snippets from a variety of shows on a public access channel in the States. And I first discovered it when I discovered Julie Fafe Bolzer. She has a regular series on there called Make It Artsy. And she shows all kinds of uh, arts and crafts and uh, things, everything from art journaling to beading to scrapbooking, you name it. Um, but she's not the only one that's on there. If you're into beading, if you're into quilting, if you're into art journaling, uh, if you're into scrapbooking, there are all kinds of other snippets from shows on this television station uh, that I'm sure will inspire you. So check that out. It's KS Productions TV. So as I said, um, if you can't get the full versions of those television programs that are being highlighted in in that on that channel um, check out the channel because they give you the snippets the the quick clips of everything they're showing and I find them especially the uh, make it artsy uh, really quite interesting and inspiring so speaking of inspiring persons of interest <clears throat> I did get an email from Anita Anita is Cherry A19 for those of you who watch Stephen and Walter live she's a regular uh, watching on that and she sent me an email this week and I asked her if I could read it because I thought it was very interesting for many reasons so I'm going to read it she said yes sure hi Stephen and Walter I just finished watching Monday's vlog I was going to send you an email anyway to apologize that I disappeared from Sunday's live vlog the truth is that I had cooked and worked all day in the kitchen for Easter supper and I took my tablet to bed with me as I want to just relax a bit. 
I remember asking you if you would ever become a snowbird, and then I was out like a light, laugh out loud. It happens, Anita, it happens. Your quilt made from the tea towels looks great. I think your quilting classes will give you a good base. I have been going through some quilting magazines, quilting arts magazine that I had collected. I think you would really enjoy it. More on the art quilt spectrum. The fabric that you had printed from Spoonflower is just amazing. They will go wild at the quilt shop when they see it. Yeah, I haven't taken it down to them yet uh, to show them that material. Uh, but uh, the Quilting Arts magazine, I have seen that. I don't tend to buy a lot of quilting magazines. Why? I'm holding myself back. Because it's like a lot of magazines I buy. I don't necessarily read them, but something in them caught my eye. So I still look at them, and if it's a magazine that's got a couple of ideas that I think I might want to try in the future, then I'll pick up the magazine. I have been following a YouTube channel called Creation CC. I just checked it out and somewhere I think you might have mentioned her before. She is from Montreal, Canada. A fun personality and I love her watercolor style. I'll have to review that but I think in one of my earlier vlogs I did uh, review Creation CC. I'll have to check. I keep a list of all the ones that I have reviewed so I will have to check the list and see if it's there and if it's not there then I then I will review it. I also follow Mike Deacon now and love his vlogs and YouTube channel. His partner Ian does amazing work too on steampunk creations. Mr. Bentley steals my heart. Mr. Bentley is Ian and Michael's dog and Ian does have, Ian's into steampunk, uh, Mike is too, but Ian actually makes things for steampunk uh, enthusiasts. Little gadgets, imaginary gadgets and buttons and all kinds of things. So recently I went to his website called Vern Industries and checked out what he had for sale. And he had a bunch of these gauges that he has made that look like something off of, well, basically a steam engine or something like that. And I thought they would make really nice elements on a mixed media canvas or page or whatever. So I ordered a bunch of them because the price was really reasonable. And uh, I think they go out into the mail today from the UK. So I'll probably get them in another week and a half or so's time. And um, they weren't expensive. Shipping was reasonable. And... Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure the quality is pretty high too because if Ian's anything like Mike, um, then I know for sure that it's going to be high quality stuff at a very reasonable price. I'll show those to you in a future vlog. So Anita goes on to say, the book you featured by Nita uh, Leland, she's actually from Dayton, Ohio area. I have met her and she teaches a weekly class at a senior citizen's place, at least I think it is for senior, called Hither Green. I'm friends with a lady who has studied with her. The book was last week's book uh, that I talked about, uh, the one about uh, uh, collaging. So that's interesting to know that uh, Anita has actually met the author. I can relate to your comments on being sensitive and critical. I had a person in my life when I was a child who was very critical and, I can le and it can leave scars. Since I left my nursing job, I have endured comments from my own family about me not working anymore. I always work to take care of my family and my son has been one of the worst critics. It has been my love for our book, self-expression and the ability to see beauty that has kept me going. Okay, Anita, that's really sad that your son, someone who you looked after, you raised the whole bit, should turn around and make comments that are hurtful to you about what you're doing now with your life. I have come to the conclusion that yes, you've heard the expression, we come into this world alone and we go out of this world alone and I believe that. We are who we are, and in the way society is, I think, and I'm starting to sound like I'm pissed off, I'm not, just talking about my own observations, it's like society expects all of us to give back to everybody else and not to ourselves. And then if we do take a little time for ourselves to pursue our interests or whatever, people criticize us because they think we're being selfish. No, we're not. I have heard the expression that if you can't look after yourself, how are you going to look after anybody else? And if you can't love yourself, how are you going to love somebody else? A little cheesy, I think that sentiment is. But I think the point is, you got to take time for yourself and not feel guilty about it. Because after all, if you're not the most important person in your own life, how can anybody else benefit from you? You've got to be these people who are self-sacrificing, give everything for everybody else, I think they are selfish. Because, I'm sorry, but I think most of them are looking for the rest of the world to accept them. And so they do this by helping other people out. Yes, I know that sounds cynical. But what I mean by that is, 
I don't believe that anybody on the face of this planet is all giving and never taking. Okay, it, that just wouldn't be human nature. Um, yes, some people take more than other people, but you know, I think for the most part, you, Anita, should not feel guilty about pursuing something that you'd like, especially at this stage in your life. You know, you've earned your retirement, you should enjoy it. Um, all of the people that share on YouTube have been good, God's, sorry, rented lips, been a godsend to me. I currently have been restricted from driving due to edema to my eyes from 20 years of being a diabetic. I currently get injections to both my eyes and it will take a couple of months to get the anema, edema under control so I can see well enough to drive. I can see it is just the distance vision that is very blurry. Well, that's too bad and getting needles in your eyes does not sound like a lot of fun to me. Anyhow, I have felt very guilty about taking the time to work on my art, writing and such. And let me say right there and then what I just said, do not feel guilty. I've decided that I'm not going to do that anymore. I have really gotten very focused and getting organized about what I want to do. I'm assuming she means she's not going to feel guilty about doing art, not that she's going to quit art altogether. Um, I'm in the middle of decluttering my craft room and getting rid of things I know I will not use. Yep, that's a real eye opener when you do that. Um, I did mine about a year ago and you wanna know something? It's getting to the point where I think I need to do it again. I've started a local writing group as a means of support for each other's creativity. That's a really great idea. I'm doing a journal of my life this year. I hope to have a blog started by May and I've, I keep watching vlogs. I may even try that. Go for it. It's not hard. It's not, you know, just do it. It's basically the hell with everybody else. Um, if people don't like your vlog, they don't have to watch it, but I'll bet you'll get a lot of people watching it. Um, I've enjoyed doing the vlogs since I started, and like you, I had hesitation about doing it. Um, but I did it anyways, and I'm glad I have. There are so many great people that are willing to share their knowledge to help others, and that's very true on YouTube channel. I mean, basically, YouTube's better than any library. You get a visual, you get instructions, you can compare different methodologies, um, the whole bit. I've learned a lot from YouTube. Um, take away my TV, don't take away my YouTube. Oh, tell Walter that I would have passed out dead if I would have tried the horse meat. I can't even eat lamb. Laugh out long. loud. Sorry this is long. Have a great weekend. Anita. Well, thank you, Anita, for sending that. That gives us, I think, a little bit more insight into who you are. And um, I find it very interesting. And I hope other people find it interesting. And I would like to encourage other people to, to write to me, too, as well. And uh, give me permission to read something like that about you. And you can see it doesn't need to be anything, uh, you know, earth shattering. It's just everyday life. But I think that's the most interesting stories are the stories of people's everyday life. Because, you know, our everyday lives are not boring. They're interesting. So please send them to me. Another person who uh, sent me a link to her blog spot is Preezy. And Preezy is new to my to Stephen and Walter Live, and she sent this through. So I have, I, she didn't send me any information really about herself, but I went on her uh, blog and she had a write up about who she is. So I've made a tiny little video clip that I'm going to insert here for you to check out. So our person of interest this week is a young lady named Preezy, and I hope I'm saying her name correctly. Um, Preezy sent me a URL to her blog spot and I have a picture of it here for you to take a look at and I've put a link to her blog spot into the show notes today below but she didn't really send me much information about herself so I went to her blog and I found this description in her own words and I'll read that to you. Hi, I'm Preezy. I set this up to be mainly a food blog since I'm a foodie and needed an outlet for my madness. Enough people told me to put a food blog up that I did. I was raised around the restaurant business and worked in the biz myself. I grew up eating lobster and sushi and Valrona, Wagyu, and Beluga were part of my vocabulary early. Definitely not part of my vocabulary, as you can see, or hear. I'm a choosy foodie, but not a snobby one. I put equal weight into a Big Mac and a fillet, filet mignon. Both have their place on my plate. I also eat a lot of exotic things, so be warned. 
All recipes and pictures on this site are mine, 100% original, invented, and pictures taken by me, unless otherwise indicated, like my recreations. Unlike other flu food blogs or YouTubers who plagiarize other people's work or use cookbook recipes. So have a look around. Make sure you click on the top bars and follow me and leave comments if you like something. Her blog does have some very unique things on it, some very unique foods, and she goes beyond just food too. She talks about some home renovations and things like that. A um, little different uh, way of approaching this topic, but a very refreshing way. So check it out if you're interested. So if you want to become a person of interest on here, I've listed in the show notes below um, some prompts that might get you started and how to send that information to me. So check that out and please do. And while you're down there checking that out, check out this week's uh, links. Of course, I have a link to Stephen and Walter Live. And I have um, Adventures in Mixed Media Art by Amy Jones, which is the book I'm going to review this week. I've got a, a link to a background technique where I used experiment with gesso and water soluble crayons and that's linked there. Um, I found an interesting uh, link to a technique I want to try and I'm going to talk about that uh, technique in a couple of minutes. It's called grab your iron and recycle your shopping bags into something useful. And I also have KS Production TV which uh, is the YouTube channel of the week. Um, I've got their link and I've got the link to what I just showed you a couple of seconds ago about Prezi, her blog spot. So what's pissing me off this week? Well, let's talk about people who are late for a class you're teaching. Now, you know that I teach art journaling classes on a regular basis. And usually most of the people are very prompt. They're usually there a little bit on the early side while the store is open because I teach it in a, in a uh, crafting store in a scrapbooking store here in my area and so they get to do a little shopping while they're there as well but what is very and I consider it inconsiderate if you show up late for a class you have to the, the instructor has to bring you up to speed at the expense of the other people in the class and I had this situation happen to me in my last class that I taught and you know this has been a repeat it's not the first time this is not a first time offender and I've had it. I've simply had it. It was unfair to the other people. Plus, I didn't think this person was going to come to the class because I had been told that um, this person was going to cancel. So I had taken one table for myself and got all my stuff laid out. She showed up late. I'm in the middle of starting the class up. I had to move things around the whole bit. I was annoyed. I was trying to, to um, you know, be you know what's the word for it I was trying to be nice okay but I decided I was going to say something so I told this person I said if you show up to one of these classes in the future late again I am not going to interrupt the class to bring you up to speed I'm just going to go on and you're going to be on your own for a little while to catch up when I have an appropriate moment I will stop when other people are working out whatever they're working and they don't need my attention and I'll bring you up to speed then. It would be better if you made sure you got here on time. This person didn't really have an excuse for why uh, she was late. Um, maybe she's one of those people that are chronic late. Not my problem. And I'm not going to make it my problem. Basically, I'll do what I said I'm going to do. It's just not fair to the other people. And you know, I've been in classes myself where people have come in late and they disrupt the class and they disrupt the class even more when they're trying to be quiet because they're late. And everybody looks at them. I feel sorry for the instructor because it puts the instructor off. Um, you know, it interrupts the flow the whole bit. It's just rude. It's inconsiderate. There's no excuse for it unless the unexpected happens and sometimes that does happen you get caught in a traffic jam you didn't weren't expecting that uh, some other event happened that was totally out of the blue okay I get it everybody's entitled to you know to that kind of thing it happens all right but as I said this is a repeat offender so and with not even an excuse for why they're late well 
What are you going to do? So that pisses me off. And it pisses me off because it pisses off other people. And people tend to be nice and won't say anything. But you know they're thinking evil thoughts in their mind. And rightly so. Because it's their time, their money, they paid for the class. And as an instructor, I'm very aware of the time that, and effort and money that they have put towards this. And so they deserve my undivided attention. Person who comes in late does not deserve that. So that's all I'm going to say about that. And if this person sees this vlog and they probably know who I'm talking about, they'll probably hate me for the rest of my life and never take one of my classes again. And you want to know what I say? So be it. Okay, moving on. Product review. And what's new? So I got a bunch of new things. One, remember I told you about that foot I bought? came from Vietnam. It had the little markings on it and that where you could set it up so you get a quarter inch uh, allowance or a half inch allowance. Well, so I got, uh, I and when I got it, it didn't fit my sewing machine. That has since I gave to one of the people that has a Singer sewing machine that it will fit at my class the other night just gave it to them and while I was there I was telling the instructor about this and she says well there is one for the Janome and so I bought it and that's what this is it's more sophisticated than the one that I bought of course it did cost more money I think it was about 45 bucks but little clip comes up this slides to wherever you want it and then you can lock it down and away you go now I haven't used it yet but I think it's worth the money because I think I'm not a very straight sewer and this is going to help a great deal with the sewing. So I got that. Um, what else did I pick up? Oh, I also learned in that class about bobbins. I thought all bobbins were kind of universal. They're not. My machine kept sort of not jamming up, but I was getting, you know, tangled up threads on the back part of what I was sewing. And I asked the instructor, you know, what did I have set wrong? She looked at my bobbins looked at my tension first then looked at my bobbins and she says well you've got the wrong bobbin in here you've got like a singer sewing machine bobbin in here when you need a genome and i said well what's the difference and she pulled one out and showed me and there was a curve to the bottom bobbin that i was using whereas the genomes are flat so i went home sorted out all my bobbins got rid of all the ones that are not genome bobbins even bought some more genome bobbins and now i'm good to go who would have known? I just figured a bobbin was a bobbin was a bobbin. Apparently not. Um, I got a little thing and I forgot to take it out, but it's 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 a threader, a needle threader. It's just a cheap little thing. It looks like a hummingbird, but it has a little bar that you stick through the eye of the needle. And with my eyesight, I have a difficult time threading a needle. So this is great. You get that stuck right through. It's got a little hook on it, put the thread on, pull it through, bang, works like a charm. Um, and like I said, it was very inexpensive. I got some new Tim Holtz stencils, of course. So I got these three stencils. I think I've got all of his stencils up to date now, um, so far. So that's good. And uh, one of several more of his rubber stamps came in. This one is called Inventor 3, but of course I had to have it because look what's on it. It's sewing. So I ordered that. I haven't used the other ones that came in yet either. I haven't used all the stencils. Things are piling up around here. I really got to get on with it. Um, also, a friend of mine who also takes my class, she uh, surprised me with a little gift. She uh, got me some ephemera from Prima. She got me a cool rubber stamp, background stamp. That's what it looks like on the back. And she got me a Julie Nutting uh, rubber stamp as well, because she knew I had a couple of these before. Now, this is not the kind of thing I really go for, but they are kind of fun. And I've got a couple of other ones, and I should do something more with them. Um, they'd make an interesting card or whatever, or maybe I'll just use them in the background of an art journal page. I don't know. But uh, that was really nice of her. She is the queen of bargain hunting on the internet. She can find, she got some stencils for a penny a piece. And they're not crappy stencils. Um, she just knows how to work the system. So uh, she should do, she should do her own YouTube channel about how to get things cheap that are good quality. And of course, during my class, 
Um, there's a couple of ladies that are big into ATCs on Sunday, so they usually give me a couple of ATCs. So I'll add them to my collection. And these are the two they had, and they're really kind of nice. One's for Valentine's Day, as you can see, and the other one's a more spring look. And on the back, they put their name. Uh, these come from Gina Campbell, uh, Campkin, sorry, not Campbell, Campkin, um, who has been to a lot of my classes and that. I know Gina fairly well, and she's an extremely creative person, as you can see. These are lovely. So they will go into a place of honor. And anything else? Nope, that's about it as far as new products. Um, book reviews. Okay, this week from my stash of books. Adventures in Mixed Media Art by Amy Jones. Again, if you're looking for inspiration. Oops, probably hit my microphone. This is full of inspiration and techniques. Uh, it says, inspiration, techniques, and projects for painting, collage, and more. Um, again, this is one of those books I forgot that I bought at some point in time. And, you know, it's got some really interesting things. Now, I probably bought this early on when I first started art journaling. And maybe that's, I felt a little intimidated once I got it home. Um, now I don't feel so intimidated. So, and I am sometimes getting a little stale on what to put on an art journal page. So I will go through this again and check it out. Cost says here Canadian twenty five fifty US twenty two ninety nine. Um, I have put a link on to where it's available, and it is a. Let me just check here. Yeah, it's an Amazon.ca site, but those of you in the states, I'm sure it's available on Amazon.com, and I think the price is still about the same uh, for that. But it's another resource. Again, Adventures in Mixed Media Art by Amy. Jones. So you may want to check it out. You might even be able to get it at your local library. Um, I know that Julie Fafay Balzer talks about going to the library all the time and picking up books about crafting and things like that. I never really thought about checking out uh, the local library for it. My problem is I like to own them. Um, but you know, maybe I should check it out just to see. Okay, so inspiration list and tips. Um, using Tim Holtz's crayons uh, with gesso for backgrounds. Now, I have got a technique video, it's listed below, called Background Technique Gesso with Water Soluble Crayons. And I show you the results of doing that. Um, it's kind of cool. Instead of using water to spread the medium, you're using actually gesso. So you get a more muted kind of look. But you can also use clear gesso with it. So that's a technique. You might want to check out that video first to see what I'm talking about and then give it a try yourself if you have the Tim Holtz uh, Distress Crayons or even if you have other water soluble crayons. Um, also, I haven't done this yet, but I just saw yesterday out of the blue um, an interesting technique where you take plastic bags, plastic grocery bags, cut them, fuse them together with a hot iron and then uh, the, the YouTube video that I saw this, uh, the lady made it into a carrying pouch. And I got thinking, you know, we have tons of those plastic bags all the time. I wonder what other things you could make with them. And if you layer them and make them thick enough, you might even be able to sew them. So I'm thinking, hmm, what kind of things could you do with this? So when I get adventuresome one day, I will, might give this a go. But again, I've put a link to this technique into the show notes. So that brings us to events in the past week. Well, on Stephen and Walter Live, we talked a little bit about this. Of course, we're doing the nursing home circuit, um, going around checking them out because I'm looking for homes. I'm picking a home for my mother. And um, I'm about to leave in about a few minutes once I finish this vlog uh, off to see another one today and another one tomorrow. Um, and it's very eye opening. And actually, nursing homes now actually are pretty good. Um, the ones I've been looking at anyways, I'm kind of impressed. They're not your grandmother's nursing home. Um, Quilting Guild, I went to last Monday and uh, that was really interesting. About 100 women and me um, and some beautiful, beautiful quilts uh, that were there. But I think I will join in September. They have one more meeting in May that uh, general public can come to and then they do their AGM in June. So we can't go to that unless you're a, a member. But basically memberships run from a, a year 
on a year's basis. So they recommended if I wanted to join, I wait till September because right now it's not much sense, is there? So that's what I will do. And I will go to the one in May. Um, told you that I had sewing class number three and we have one class left and that's to quilt that sucker. And I had my class on the weekend, art journal class 14. And I'm going to right now insert right here a short little video of that class. So here is everybody for the art journaling class. And you realize this is art journaling class number 14. I do. For those of you that I have been to through all my stuff. <laughs> and count them off. But Carol says I'm not going to put numbers on them anymore because she's afraid it'll scare the newbies away if they see the numbers. Uh, I'm a newbie, so. It didn't scare you away. Damn, what am I not doing, B? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's one I could come to. <laughs> so you can see everybody's doing a challenge today. They're doing the Mike Deacon challenge. And so, and they're earning tickets for a fabulous prize. So every element they do in their art journal book from the challenge, they get a ticky. I think some of them are cheating. I don't know. Ticket every minute. Ah, the real thrill will come when they see what the prize is. <laughs> and the joke's on you. So they're all busy, busy, busy. You can see them. Oh, I see it. Engrossed in it. I just didn't want to move until we We're just it. happy to be back after four months of. Uh, yeah, have you yeah. slacking off? Yeah, there, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, well, sorry about that, girls. <laughs> yeah. Speaking well, of which, yeah. um, last year we didn't run any in July and August, so I would assume that's probably. Yeah. We'll have May, we'll have June, and we'll start up in September again. September will be the second Sunday because the first one is Labor Day weekend. I have no idea what we're doing for June. I have no idea what we're doing for September. Although I am thinking for June. Would you be interested in being a little bit more daring and veer away from your art journals and do a mixed media piece using packaging? What do you mean sure. packaging? I mean all the things that we throw in the garbage. And uh, you can get some really, you can use that. You use your art journaling techniques and everything like that in your stash, but save your packaging. Your, you know, the labels that come on things or like especially your scrapbooking stuff. You know how everything comes with the like plastic, like Tim Holtz has these cards and his and that. Yeah. So save them up for June's class. Bring them in along with your usual stuff and we'll do a mixed media piece. We can do a giant tag uh, with them. I've done that. They turn out pretty good. Um, could actually do a canvas, a small canvas if you're interested in that. Uh, as well, so I don't know what your thoughts or your feelings might be or what you would like to do So let's do it by first of all. Are you interested in doing a mixed-media piece using packaging? Sure. Yes. Yes. Okay We're gay. Do you want to do it as a giant tag? You know the big delusion style tags or would you want to do it on say like a six by six canvas? Tag. Tag. Good choice because I got a lot of those <laughs> so, Yeah so I say, if we do it on a six by six yeah, canvas, I'm gonna have to charge you a little extra yeah. for it. But the tag one, I got lots of those. Okay, giant tag, mixed media, save your packaging from here on in from whatever. You don't need a lot of it, but you know, if you see something interesting, interesting script, interesting colors, interesting images on it, put it away in a baggie or something and uh, we'll use that. Okay, that sounds good. And so I'll let you go back to work now. That's enough of your 15 minutes of fame. So what's coming up this week? My last sewing class. Did I mention that? Yeah, prob more times than enough. And there's something called the Creative Festival. Happens twice a year, once in the spring, once in the fall. It's in Toronto. And uh, they have all kinds of things. I think they focus a lot on quilting and on sewing, and that's why I'm going. I've been before, but the other times that I've been, I was focused on you know my art journaling, paper crafting, scrapbooking. Now I'm focused on the quilting. Could be dangerous, I can see me spending a lot of money on stuff so but we're going to go on saturday to that and on sunday we have the volunteer luncheon at the uh, art gallery that we both volunteer for and then there's a panel discussion uh, about the latest installations and things like that and that's always uh, a good time and it's always a really lovely lunch and it's free it's a, an appreciation lunch for all the volunteers which is really nice so i'll tell you more about that next week after it has happened and that's about it for this week. Um, off to see a nursing home. And I uh, hope you have a good week. And remember, please write to me. Be a person of interest. And I hope your week is a great week. Bye-bye for now.